Hello, welcome back. By now, uh, we have uh, already seen the introductory video of Databricks and also understood how to activate the free trial uh, for the practice purpose. And now let's quickly jump on to the actual topics of uh, Databricks and uh, let's learn uh, Databricks uh, uh, in detail, right? So with, uh, with that, uh, we will start the module one, which is more about the Databricks architecture, workspace and the services. And uh, in the module one, uh, we have picked up the first topic of architecture and services. Basically, in this video, we will see how the Databricks architected internally so that we will, uh, as a data engineer or uh, whoever is using the Databricks, we will understand the internal implementation of the Databricks, uh, which is quite important uh, when we are uh, working more closely with Databricks. And also, what are the different services in terms of uh, clusters, right, uh, that we talk uh, more often in Databricks. Uh, world so we will understand this concept in uh, much more detail before proceeding if you are new to this channel and haven't yet subscribed to this channel we would recommend you to please subscribe and also press bell button for instant notification let's get started so as you can see the databricks architecture is uh, something similar to this uh, where exactly we see there is a diff there is a control pane and a data plane. So what exactly this means, right? Before understanding these in details, uh, you can see the control pane is attached to the Databricks cloud account and the data plane uh, is attached to the customer cloud account. That means uh, whenever you are using a Databricks, uh, you will uh, actually need both these accounts. Suppose uh, you, are, uh, you are using a Databricks uh, uh, you are using a Databricks cluster, right? So definitely you will be creating a Databricks cloud account, right? And in the background, uh, you will also see the customer cloud account. That means uh, customer cloud account is nothing but uh, the cloud vendor uh, who is uh, who might be Microsoft Azure, AWS or GCP, right? So where uh, this is what we're calling as a customer cloud account. And now let us understand what is control pane. Control pane is uh, nothing but it's just a plain UI where uh, you get uh, all the controls uh, and the user interfaces uh, to create clusters, uh, jobs uh, and interact with jobs and uh, different uh, options that you have uh, or that options given by Databricks, right? It is basically an end-to-end -end UI where you will be operating with Databricks. So this is this is what uh, exactly the front end, what we can call, uh, is completely uh, what we call it as a control pane. And this is hosted uh, in the Databricks cloud account, okay? So this is just a UI and this UI might consist of web application. Uh, this is a, like a web application because it's a REST API enabled web application. And there will be a repos and notebooks where you are creating the writing, the uh, actual coding or maybe a SQL scripting. So those we call it as a notebooks and uh, you can also schedule them uh, uh, to run at a particular time slot. Uh, and also we can do a cluster management. So these we will see in detail, but uh, just understand the control pane is where uh, you get the uh, end-to-end control of the Databricks, uh, all this, uh, whatever we see here. So end-to-end -end, uh, control UI, we will be able to see, and this is ma managed by Databricks. Uh, and coming to the data plane, right? So this is where uh, actually your data is getting processed. So maybe you are creating a jobs here. You, you might, it might feel like uh, your jobs are running in the Databricks, uh, uh, Databricks uh, cloud account. So you are now, please note that your jobs will never run in Databricks cloud account. It will al always run in a customer cloud account. Maybe it is Azure, GCP or AWS. So this is just a control that you are, it's just a UI, right? So, but actual jobs, uh, when you trigger, right? Th there will be compute power, which is needed. There is a CPU, there is a memory, which is needed to run the job or process the data. So that actually be consumed in the data plane. And also physically the data will be stored or uh, fetched basically in the data plane itself, right? So as you can see, uh, here is where the clusters are physically the clusters are present right the spark clusters you might clear create the clusters here but the actual uh, they are present in the uh, data plane where uh, physically the clusters are hosted in a in a uh, virtual machines right and these clusters provide the compute power memory power for processing underlying data so which might be present in the databricks file system uh, dbf which we call it as a dbfs and it might be from an external uh, data source uh, as you can uh, take example, like uh, you might be using uh, 
AWS S3 bucket or you might be using uh, uh, Azure blob storage or data lake storage or might or uh, GCP uh, related uh, storage accounts right where exactly your data will uh, will be stored and uh, fetched and uh, processed and stored back and the cluster management is nothing but uh, so where exactly we will be creating the clusters uh, we will see what are the different client uh, kinds of clusters but here is where you create the clusters and uh, each of these clusters uh, uh, will be created physically in the data plane right and uh, basically the cluster management uh, why we create a cluster is uh, we will be need, we will need uh, for a data engineering use case machine learning use case or if you want to perform a data analysis definitely you need a compute power so if you need a compute power to process any data any run any queries or any jobs so definitely you need a cluster right so that in that case you will need a you need to create a cluster uh, in the databricks workspace and now let us jump to the actual uh, topic where we'll understand uh, what is Databricks cluster. So Databricks cluster simply means uh, it is uh, it gives the compute power, right? So as you know, and from the previous slide, the Databricks cluster will be uh, created uh, from the control pane, but uh, physically, actually, the, the clusters are physically created in the data plane itself, where uh, the exact, I mean, actual, uh, uh, customer uh, cloud vendor cloud vendor is there right so it might be uh, azure gcp or aws so there uh, it the cluster is physically created in one of the virtual machines uh, one or more virtual machines basically so that we will not come to know because uh, cluster is nothing but it is a uh, just a, a SaaS kind of application where uh, it provides a software as a service and internally what exactly uh, it brings up the cluster physically, we don't care uh, about that. But uh, at a high level, the cluster will give the compute power where you can run the jobs, you can run the scripts, uh, where you can actually do the data transformations, uh, where you can uh, uh, query the data from and to, right? And uh, basically, yeah, definitely the, the by the word cluster, you might be understanding uh, it might be a one or more virtual machines made up of one or more virtual machines and uh, it is it is physically it's not a one uh, it might not be a uh, one virtual machine because if you're creating a cluster of high configurations uh, so then uh, your uh, cluster is a combination of multiple virtual machines uh, which are physically separated and uh, all these virtual machines uh, combined together will make one cluster and uh, physically if you see how exactly the data with cluster looks like in this diagram so there will be a one driver uh, node what we call it as and uh, there will be a multiple executor nodes it is like a master and child uh, sorry master and slave uh, where uh, driver is driver acts like a master and executor acts as a slaves where uh, your driver uh, will coordinate the activities uh, that is uh, given to the cluster like it distributes the uh, workload uh, among the different executors that we have it balances the workload basically and then uh, so executors are where your actual uh, workload or the jobs will run uh, and these uh, all the jobs will run as a spark job because uh, the cluster databricks cluster itself is a uh, uh, hosted on the spark uh, engine and as you can see the important thing here is uh, there will always be a one driver but n number of executors you can create n number of executors uh, as per the requirement uh, of your uh, a project or the requirement of the jobs that you are running and also each executors will be having uh, their own memory and the storage so this also can be tweaked according to the requirement and uh, you can understand uh, as, as by the experience uh, like what is the number of i mean uh, cores that you want to give what is the number of uh, cores that you want to give for the storage uh, so that you can uh, understand by some kind of trial and error or some kind of experience uh, when you start working on the actual project so in the next slide uh, we will understand what are the different uh, types of clusters at a high level so definitely there are a uh, few more uh, granular types of cluster we will understand in the later point of time but at a high level right so there is a all-purpose cluster uh, or a general purpose cluster what we can call and there is a job cluster so all-purpose cluster is nothing but uh, you will create as a user, right? You will go and create uh, these clusters manually in a Databricks uh, workspace. That means you, uh, as a user, you go to the Databricks workspace, log in, and you will manually create this. Uh, and you give all the configurations, what is needed, 
like we have mentioned what is the number of uh, workers you need that is executors you need what is the what is the configuration and what is the configuration of driver so you will specify everything and you will manually create it so once it is created right you will be able to kind of a uh, uh, multiple users can use uh, this all-purpose cluster suppose there are uh, 10 uh, developers in your project or uh, there might be different data analysts in your project everyone can use it but uh, coming to the job cluster right it is not created by anyone so it actually create uh, automatically created by the job schedulers if you are scheduling a job data bricks job right and uh, you uh, tag that as a job uh, tag that to a job cluster so job cluster will be created on the fly and executes that job and automatically terminates on the fly. So this happens on the, everything on the fly and it cannot be shared across multiple people or multiple jobs or multiple uh, jobs. So it will be dedicated for only that only for that job. And as you can see, it is dedicated for only that uh, running of that in, uh, run instance, right? Yeah. And uh, as you have manually created this and uh, there will be a cluster alive, right? So this cluster will always be alive unless it is uh, got terminated uh, because of a timeout or manually someone has go and terminated it so it will always be alive you can uh, just use that cluster and uh, uh, you can uh, a number of uh, users can uh, use that cluster to, to kind of uh, interactively uh, run their notebooks and uh, since that is the case uh, there is a full control on the cluster and the code basically you can uh, users can manually terminate the cluster upscale the cluster uh, and restart the cluster and also they can uh, run the part of the code right here it is not you can you cannot uh, you don't have any control over the cluster so you cannot restart the cluster or you cannot do any any such activities it just runs and terminates automatically and you cannot run the piece of code also it runs the entire uh, notebook code as a bunch right and uh, uh, you might be knowing as uh, uh, by now that all purpose cluster will be suitable uh, for the development cases where uh, you will will be doing a trial and error you will be adding a uh, number of codes a number of lines and uh, practicing or kind of a debugging right but once the development is complete and uh, if you want to move to the move the code to the production like environment where you want to deploy the code so then job clusters can be utilized so i mean you can use uh, all purpose cluster for uh, production use cases also but uh, the bl job clusters are the more suitable uh, to save the cost if the your job is uh, not running the entire day right so then you can choose the job cluster uh, which will definitely save the cost hope this was useful thanks for watching